In this video, we'll be covering how to update the certificates on your Firebox. We'll begin with an explanation of the common certificate statuses you'll see on the Firebox, and then I'll go over how to check the certificate details, like the expiration date and so on, and then we'll dig into the reasons why you would want to update any existing certificates you would have on the Firebox. The first thing to cover is the certificate statuses that you'll see. If you see any pending certificates, these are simply certificate signing requests that have not been fulfilled with a signed certificate. If you've generated these CSRs yourself and you are not planning on importing a signed certificate, you can go ahead and just delete those. If you do see any pending certificates that were generated by the Firebox, those are typically going to be from an older version of firmware and you can delete those as well without any issue. The next status here is expired, and that's pretty self-explanatory. It's just any certificate that is beyond the valid to date. And we'll cover how to address those in just a moment here. And then lastly, we have the signed certificate, which is just any valid certificate. So if we jump into the Firebox system manager here, if you click on View Certificates or just click this icon on the toolbar, you'll open up the Certificates menu. On this menu, we can see the statuses that I just covered a moment ago, as well as the Type column that indicates the function of the certificate on the device. You can also see here the different common names, and these will give you the more specific function if you're ever curious about what each of these does. These are pretty self-explanatory. These would be like the SSL VPN, and down here, for example, this would be our Ike V2 certificate, and so on. If you want to see the details of any certificate, you can either highlight it and click Details, or you can simply double-click the certificate. In here, we can take a look at important fields such as the valid from date, which will let you know when the certificate was created. If your certificate was created before February 2016, then it will be a SHA-1 certificate, which will cause problems with modern web browsers and newer VPN clients. You should also look at valid to date. That way you know when your certificates are going to expire on your device. That way you can plan for some maintenance. So what does happen if one of these Firebox certificates is expired? Well, Let's say, for example, this 802.1x certificate is expired. You would simply highlight it and click Delete, provide the admin credentials, and then it's gone. I'll do the same thing for this other 802.1x cert, just so we can see what happens if multiple certs are deleted. At this point, I have two options. I can either reboot the Firebox, because if the Firebox sees that any of the built-in certificates are missing, it will regenerate them automatically. Or, if I do not want to reboot the device, I can use the CLI to regenerate those certificates. So I'm going to use PuTTY and connect here on port 4118, which is the standard port for the CLI. And I'm going to log in as the admin user. And the command here is upgrade certificate. And then you can see which certificates you can regenerate. So in this case, I'm going to generate the 802.1x ones. Run the command. That should be good. So over here, I'll just click the refresh button. And there we go. We have brand new 802.1x certificates available. So that's pretty simple for a majority of the certificates on the device. So I'm going to go ahead and just exit out of the CLI here. But there is one certificate that that process does not work for as easily. You can see here this certificate has an asterisk next to the status, and that is telling you that this is the currently active Firebox web server certificate. This certificate is the one running WSM management connections as well as all web pages on the Firebox. So for this one, we're going to need to do a different procedure. I'm going to have to open up Policy Manager, and then I will go to Setup, Certificates, 
and then on this tab here, Firefox Web Server Certificate, that's what we're dealing with. Right now it is set to the default signed certificate, that's what we're using, but if this certificate was expired, or I simply wanted to change that certificate, I have multiple options here. If I had imported a third-party web server certificate, including one from a publicly signed CA, if I imported that onto the Firebox, I could select this and choose it from the dropdown. I don't have any imported certificates right now, so I don't have anything to choose. But I can also create a custom certificate that will be signed by the Firebox's CA. So in here, I can just type in my certificate's common name, and I can fill out the organization. And then these two buttons right here are related to the subject alternative name. So what kinds of values do you want there? I'm going to skip the organizational unit since that's optional, but I'll go ahead and type in a domain to put into the subject alternative name. And I will also add an IP address in case I want this to be in the certificate. If I'm only accessing my Firebox via IP addresses, this will be useful. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll click OK, and then I will save this change to the Firebox. So now if I come back over here to the Certificates menu, if I refresh that, you can see the certificate is now replaced with the custom one that I have created. So the expiration date is also extended. And if I want to go back to using the default certificate, that is an option, but it is not necessary. But if you choose to do so, you would simply go to Setup, Certificates, Firebox Web Server Certificate tab, and then choose that default signed certificate, and then save that change to the Firebox. And this will restore it to the default common name and subject alternative name, which is blank in the default certificate, but it will have a new expiration date. So totally up to you which way you go. That covers all of the different procedures for updating the Firebox certificates. So just to recap, it's important to check the certificate statuses on your Firebox. If you have some leftover pending CSRs, you can remove those. If you have certificates that are expired, it's very easy to regenerate those. Or you may have certs that are about to expire, and you'll need to plan a maintenance window to take care of those. When it comes to the Firebox's web server, Again, it's used for the WSM connections, as well as all other web pages on the Firebox. And to replace that, it's a slightly different process, just swapping it to a custom cert or a third-party cert. That way it will automatically regenerate with the new expiration date. And then all of the other certificates on the Firebox, you can just use the normal procedure of deleting it and regenerating it using the CLI or by rebooting the Firebox. For more information on certificates, please use the WatchGuard technical search.